you know, chunking that through. Uh, oh, uh, there's an interesting idea. He, uh, thank you, sir. He's saying throwing a stopwatch through. Now, that is interesting, uh, Michael, because if the stopwatch made it out the other side... Yeah, and, not, not, electri but not the electronics getting destroyed. And there had been, uh, well, even if it's mechanical. Yeah. Of course, uh, then it would be a subject to a mechanical field, probably stop it cold. But if you could get one through, uh, it might provide you with an idea of whether it actually went through a time distortion. Yeah, like said, like said to them, like uh, have keep one through the other one and them for exact same time. That's good, Michael. Yeah. Very good. Uh, stay right where you are. We'll be right w back with you. Michael Markham, um, Madman uh, uh, Michael Markham, uh, is my guest. We'll be right back. Back to Michael Markham. Uh, Michael, were you surprised to hear from your arresting officer? <laughs> uh, yeah. <Very. laughs> Me too. Uh, that was like quite a coincidence. He's apparently uh, following your case, Michael. Does that make you nervous? In other words, uh, I would. Uh, he knows where you are now, doesn't he? Uh... I don't know if he does or not. I think he does. I know. Uh, I don't know if he knows exact house I'm in, but I think he knows I'm in St. Joseph. So. St. Joseph, we'll see. So, wouldn't surprise me, but that he or his friends might be cruising by your apartment looking for strange flashes. In yeah. the night, that sort of thing. <sighs> All right, let's see what we've got out there. East of the Rockies, you're on the air with Michael Markham. Yeah, this is a rep. I gotta get my radio art. All right, turn it off. Yeah, I'm going to turn it off. Just give me a chance. All right. I got it. It's gone. Good. Okay. Uh, where are you I'm calling? The St. Joe Thursday. Where, where are you calling from? I'm sir? calling from Leavenworth, Kansas. Leavenworth, all right. Yes, sir. Uh, I would like to say that your guest, I think, is uh, just a little bit uh, nuts. Uh, he's probably as nutty as I am. <laughs> I would like to make a comment. Uh, as far as what he's doing, I think he's, uh, he's on the right track, but uh, you being a ham radio operator... Uh, that's what I am. Uh, you have to understand that you also have to have a transmitter and a receiver. Uh, do you kind of get what I'm getting at now? Well, I guess uh, the Jacob's Ladder uh, may have been a crude transmitter and receiver in a sense. Uh, he well, was, in know, other words, he, yeah. wait a minute, sir. He was propagating uh, this voltage across those two rods, and uh, it may have been a kind of a blunderbuss way of going about it, but... I can understand that he might achieve the effect he thinks he did. Well, uh, you had a, uh, a gentleman on one night that uh, 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 was explaining the uh, theories with Nikolai Tesla. Yes. Okay, and uh, I've studied Tesla in, in depth. I've uh, been studying Tesla for a good 25 years. And I'd like to ask your guest a question. Where did he come up with this, uh, this idea that he would use high voltage? All right. Uh, it's a good question. Where did you? Um, the, well, the, you mean for the time machine deal? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it, like I said before, it, it, it didn't, like, I, went, I didn't set out to build the time machine. Uh, As is so many, the, so many times the case with any discovery, you were simply trying to build a Jacob's Ladder. Yeah, just like a, a something fancy to watch thing. Uh, just to see the spark go up, sort of be... Yeah, Some, cool, something cool to do. I no, I look. I understand that perfectly. Believe me, I understand that. And uh, it uh, an unexpected effect occurred. These things happen. First time caller line. You're on the air with Michael Markham. Oh, hello, Art. Hello. This is Chuck in Redmond, Washington. Yes, Chuck. I just wanted to call, and I'm so glad I got through tonight <clears throat> because uh, people like us that are messing around with this kind of thing, we got to kind of stick together. Oh, you're another one, are you? Well, a little bit. It's, I'm mostly my friends, uh, that sort of thing. I, I got into it about three years ago, started collecting information, and I've got a bulletin board, computer bulletin board service where I try to get all this stuff together and get people to talk about it. Because uh, I ran into a buddy who originally had taken, he was using a lot less voltage, but he was just using DC batteries, made a couple of coils, and uh, was using a police radio that he would key, well, excuse me, a ham radio, a handheld, and he would key it, and then tweak through the frequencies and I guess he hit the resonant frequency of the circuit and cut a long story short he ended up in the loony bin for a little while and he's okay now but I went down and snuck a tape recorder in to interview him and I got it all on tape about an hour's worth of conversation and uh, he he told me he was telling me all about his time travels and how he had gone through this portal and that portal and had to go through 12 worlds to get back and quite frankly I thought he'd lost it and uh, I'm not even sure now, but um, 
that was kind of interesting. So I did more research, and then I, I pre presented this to another buddy of mine who fools around with electronics like I do, and I said, hey, what do you think of this? And at first, he, well, at first he stopped, and then he looked down and he goes, well, I could see how you get some kind of interesting effect out of that. And then about two weeks later, he kind of came up to me, well, he came up to me, he was kind of pale in the face, and he said, uh, wow, one of the engineers upstairs at where I work, which is where they manufacture uh, medical equipment, mm -hmm. uh, he said that he had taken two four-foot square capacitors out of an x-ray machine and hooked them up to a short length of 12-gauge uh, wire. You know, that's a very thick wire for somebody who wouldn't know. Laid it on the floor and threw a quarter in it, and he pushed the, the uh, conductors together, the electrodes together, until it got close enough to arc. I don't want to know how he did that. And apparently after the spark, it disintegrated the 12-gauge wire, and the quarter was reduced to the size of a dime but a quarter-inch thick and apparently still in good shape. Um, well, that's something, and uh, it's uh, another, yet another effect. In the case of Michael's experiment, the screw disappeared and then reappeared. Best of Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell. Tonight's program is a rebroadcast from April 18, 1995. Please do not call it. Here again I am. My guest is Michael Markham. He's too young to call him Father Time, so we're calling him Madman Markham. <laughs> uh, here are a couple of faxes in on the subject. Art, no, I don't think you juice this one up. Well done. What a scoop. What tremendous bloodhound intuitive tenacity. You're one in a million, as is young Michael. I predict a great future for him if he doesn't blow himself up or get lynched first. I can just see the light pouring out from the cracks in the porch. Art, help him find a mentor quickly. And then, like he needs encouragement, get this. Art, we've done uh, what we estimated to be a 30 kilowatt version of what Michael did. However, we did not see the time travel application, but if he needs transformers, we've got them as leftovers from our electrical business. Free, if he wants, he provides shipping. I'm sure, like us, there are many people that have uh, more than uh, what he needs for experimenting. He's really talking small-scale power. 100 kilowatts is just medium power level. I cannot suggest within that it be done within the city limits, however. People are not very technically tolerant around here either. Randy listening to Kogo in San Diego. So, uh, Michael, there you have it. It is a free offer of uh, of that which put you behind bars. Uh, th this guy's willing to give you Transformers. Cool, huh? Yeah, very. So, is that something you might go for? Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, well, I can put you two together. I've got Randy's number here in San Diego, and I'll give it to you privately uh, tomorrow. How's that? Okay. <laughs> Oh, uh, I don't want to be arrested for being part of this. Um, but nevertheless, um, I, it's a good offer. How do you feel about the possibility, Michael, of somebody coming along and being your mentor even more than this, maybe contributing money to build a great big gigantic version? Oh, that'd be great. That'd be like a dream come true. So you, you'd go for it, huh? Oh, yeah. Set up a lab somewhere and go for the really big voltage and really big current and... Uh, Boy. All right. Uh, west of the Rockies, you're on the air with Michael. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm calling from Medford, Oregon. Medford, uh, K-O-P-E country. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering what makes you think it's a time machine and not some sort of thing like Star Trek um, beaming from one point to another? That's a good question. Uh, yeah, what makes you think uh, you're on the track of time here, Michael? It disappeared. The question is where to go and for how long? Uh, well, uh, that's like, well, before my laser burn up, that's uh, pretty much uh, just the other side. I had to go by what I saw. So right now, it could be, it's like a, it could be several things. Like, it could have been like a, it could have went through time. It could have went through like a something like the Philadelphia experiment, and like a made it invisible or something like that. I'm not like 100 percent certain what it is, but uh, I'll, say, I'll say this much, Michael. Uh, all kidding aside, you know, I I think that if I had done what you've done, and I, I'm kind of person likely to do that, I disassembled all my mom's appliances when I was about eight or nine years old. Yeah. And uh, I'm a big experimenter, so if I'd noticed an effect like that. I'd be on it too, like glue, and I'd 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 keep going. 
I mean, who cares what people say, right? Yeah. Is that your attitude? Yeah, pretty much. Everybody's got their opinion. Yeah, they sure do. Uh, and here's another one for you. East of the Rockies, you're on the air with Michael Markham. Hi. Hello, Art. This is Christoph from Kansas City. Yes, sir. Uh, right near where Michael's home. Yeah, very right near. Uh, my question would be, I, I would like to know if you guys would explore some of the more technical aspects, such as uh, which direction in time it might be going. Um, if indeed he did get to a point where he, can, he himself could step through it, how he would be sure that he could get back from which direction he went. That's an interesting question. Um, although the screw came back, and he was going to try, I think you said, an orange next, or something like that. Yeah. And see if it came back intact. And then maybe a kitty cat. And then maybe Michael. Would you? I, I'm curious, Michael, would you have stepped in yourself, or would you, if you got to that point, or would you have looked for a volunteer? <laughs> uh, well, if I had looked for a volunteer and he had make it back, I'd, be, I'd make me guilty of murder. And, uh, I'm already... Got, I already I had like 60 till, days in jail, and that was a plan enough for me. So you you wouldn't want to be on trial like O.J.? No. Uh, of course, they wouldn't have a body. Yeah, that's true, but... Uh, heck, I don't know. So you would have you would have done it yourself, then? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Felt, I just, uh, if I wasn't, like, legally, wouldn't have, like, been found guilty of, like, found guilty of anything, I still wouldn't have wanted, wanted like, anybody to do that. Okay. Uh, wild Card Line, you're on the air with Michael Markham. Hi. Hi there. Yeah, I've got a, about two or three questions for Michael. And, and very, very interesting uh, program. This is John from Reno. Yes, John. It's a great program. <laughs> Did uh, he have any uh, Tesla research information before he started this? Well, that's a good point. Have you have you looked into Tesla at all, Michael? Uh, yeah, it's, I've, uh, science in general is, like, really, that's, I don't know, I guess you could call that my hobby. Uh um, uh, I read all, all sorts of books. Let's see, I've read Tesla. Uh, right now I'm reading, uh, uh, there's this book, I forget who it's by, but it's like the string theory of the universe, so. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, how about the Philadelphia experiment? You, you checked that one out, too? Uh, yeah, it's like real hard to find information on that in libraries, so I'd like, uh, uh, I've got like, uh, this, this past, um, uh, uh, conference I went to just a few days ago. Uh, found out like information on that, information on the Mont uh, the Montauk project, which is a spinoff of the Philadelphia experiment. Michael, right. uh, let me add something here. Uh, Michael, we did a program with one of the people involved in the Philadelphia experiment, and Michael he gave all the technical details of exactly how they did it in the program. Uh, what was it? Uh, was that guy uh, Al Billick? Al Billick. Uh, I'm trying to get in touch with that guy. Um, I can get in touch with uh, Mr. Billick, 